वेलकम एवरीवन इन दिस एनपीटेल ऑनलाइन सर्टिफिकेशन कोर्स ऑन बायोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस डिजाइन फॉर वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट सो इन टूडेज लेक्चर वील कंटिन्यू स्टडिंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एरोबिक वेस्ट वाटर ट्रीटमेंट सिस्टम्स सो टूडे वील बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग द रोटेटिंग डिस्क रिएक्टर अर्लियर वी हैव स्टडीड द activated sludge system then trickling filter sequential batch reactor now continuing further we'll study the rotating disk reactor which is commonly used in some of the reactor systems for treatment of waste water via aerobic means now the rotating biological disk reactor are type of attached growth system uh, which is similar to like the trickling filter so it is very similar to tickling filter but the system of attached is different as compared to the tickling filter in the tickling filter the attachment is done on some packings whereas here the attachment is done on a rotating disk so in rbrs the microorganisms are attached to support materials which are placed inside a cylinder which is partially immersed in the water to be treated now the cylinder with the microorganisms it keeps on rotating so that the microorganisms are alternatively exposed to the waste water and to the air from which they obtain the oxygen required for the removal of the substrate the rbr thus are aerobic processes now that means we have a system where a cylinder is there on the cylinder on a soft a rotating disk is there that rotating disk keeps on revolving now on the rotating disk we have mercury organisms when the the rotation of the disk happens the micro organisms are once exposed to waste water and another time they are exposed to the air from which they take the oxygen and thus the treatment takes place so we can see this is the design so we have the this figure shows the schematic of the rotating biological reactor now we have this disk you can see here now on this disk we have microorganisms which are grown now this disk keeps on rotating like this now while rotation the partial disk is immersed inside the waste water which has to be treated now the waste water comes from this side in the in the form of influent and after some time it goes from this side as effluent now when the disk part is outside the air then the exposure of the microorganisms to the air takes place and thus they grow also when they the disk goes inside the waste water treatment happens so this is the schematic of the rbr now rotating biological contactors have treatment objectives they are used to remove the biodegradable organic matter and convert ammonical nitrogen and organic nitrogen to nitrate nitrogen so they are this is one of the major objectives when the rotating biological contactors are used the process effluent which is the clarified 5 day bod and total suspended concentration can easily be reduced to less than 30 mg per liter each uh, using the rbrs now the combined carbon oxidation and nitrification can also be accomplished in the rbc system so generally in the activated sludge system we can only treat the carbon part but in the rbrs we can also take care of the nitrate part and we can perform the nitrification as well some other objectives of the rbrs include the rbc or rbrs can be used for separate stage nitrification also that is only to nitrify the streams containing relatively high concentration of ammonical nitrogen and low concentration of organic matter so if we have any waste water which contains more amount of ammonical nitrogen something which is coming from a fertilizer industry or other places then we can uh, specifically use the rotating biological contactors for treatment of such waste water now the rotating biological contractors can also be used to accomplish denitrification also it is possible to perform the denitrification using the rotating biological contractors the typical characteristics of the rotating disk reactors include 
high volumetric reaction rates because of the high biomass concentration. So, since the biomass is more concentrated on the rotating disc, so we can have more throughput and high volumetric reaction rates can be obtained. Typical dimension of the disc used for RBRs are like 3.5 meter in diameter. So, you can think of an 8 meter in length. So, we can have various discs rotated on the same RBC reactors. So, this is possible and these are suited for low flow rates of the wastewater to be treated. So, depending upon the quantity of the water, we can design the RBRs in different manners and then we can use them for the treatment of wastewater. Now, working scheme for rotating disc reactors is the shaft is rotated at a constant speed, thereby allowing any point on a disc to be alternatively submerged and then alternatively exposed to the atmosphere. So, it will be rotating at a constant speed, first it will be exposed to the wastewater and then it will be exposed to the atmosphere also. When water containing organic matter, nitrogen or other nutrients flow through the bioreactors, the microorganisms consume the substrate and grow attached to the disc as a biofilm. So, they grow as a biofilm on the disc. The rotating action imparts a shear force also to the biofilm because it is continuously rotating. So, keeping its thickness relatively constant by removing the cells generated by consumption of the substrate. So, there is always a shear force when the disc is coming back, when the section of the disc which is exposed to the atmosphere, it is coming back to the wastewater, then a shear force is exerted and because of the which the extra biofilm which has been generated at that gets peeled off. So, that means the thickness of the biofilms also remains constant when we are rotating the disc. The turbulence generated by the rotation transfers oxygen to the bulk liquid and keeps the slowed microorganisms in the suspension. So, they can be carried out in the effluent. So, uh, this is the removed microorganism layer remains suspended in the effluent and it is carried out of the effluent and further on it can be separated out. The turbulence is sufficient to make the substrate concentration uniform throughout the tank. So, we have to see that the enough turbulence is there so that we can have constant concentration of substrate inside the RBR reactors. In other words, for all practical purposes, the tank to be considered is completely mixed. So, this is a completely mixed reactor, we can always follow this assumption. The most common arrangement of the disc is with the soft perpendicular to the direction of the liquid flow. So, this is how earlier in the figure also we have seen. So, we can see here the influent is coming, the water will go like this. The, this is the disc, now this disc is perpendicular to the flow direction of the influent and there can be 10 to 15 or more than that the continuous parallel disc also. So, there will be a large number of disc which will be parallel to each other and mounted on the same shaft which is here. Okay. So, and then this all the disc system is covered by this layer. So, we have a cover on the top. Also after treatment the water will come like this, the nutrients, food they will be taken by the microorganisms which are grown on this disc. Oxygen will be taken when this is exposed to the atmosphere. Now, oxygen is taken from here, food and nutrients are taken from the wastewater and we have degradation products and sludge. Sludge means the peeled off the microorganism layer. Now, this will go into the effluent and the, this interstage baffle will transfer this to the effluent. We can have a second stage RBC also if required and we can have a second stage RBC here also if required depending upon the whether we want to design such a system or not. So, it is possible to have second stage or third stage RDR systems or RBR systems in series. So, we have parallel disk and whole system can be replicated in series also. So, this is the schematic diagram of single disc, but we can have a 
multiple disk systems also. So, the design criteria for the rotating biological disk reactors is number of modules may be 4 to 5 depending upon the requirement. The diameter of flat disk may be varied from 2 to 6 meter. The thickness of flat disk is around up to 10 millimeter. The thickness of plastic disk if they are used is 1 to 2 meter. The disk spacing which is there between different parallel disk, it may be 20 to 40 millimeter. The speed of rotating soft is 1 to 2 rpm. So, it is not very quick, it is slow like 1 to 2 rotations per minute and the peripheral velocity of the disk that means, if this is the disk, so what is the velocity here? So, it will be 10 to 25 meter per minute. So, this is the speed. Now, generally 40 percent of the disk area is submerged inside the reactor, inside the waste water and 60 percent is exposed to the atmosphere. The thickness of biofilm is 2 to 4 meter and the length of the soft may be up to 8 meter. The hydraulic retention time that means, the how much time the water remains inside the disk is may vary from 0.5 to 4 hours depending upon the characteristic of the water and how much treatment we require. The organic loading rate may be 3 to 20 gram BOD 5 per meter square of the disk area. The hydraulic loading in terms of volume may be the 0.02 to 0.16 meter cube per meter square per day and the sludge production rate may be 0.5 to 0.8 kg per kg BOD 5 removed. So, based upon these considerations, we can design the system. So, let us try to solve a problem. In this question, it is given that we have to design a rotating contactor to treat 10 MLD of municipal wastewater having BOD 5 concentration of 250 milligram per liter. So, we have 10 MLD of municipal wastewater which is getting generated and it is having 250 milligram per liter of BOD 5. The primary treatment it is found that 30 percent of the BOD 5 is removed. Of rest we have to remove in the this rotating biological disc contactor. Now, the desired effluent quality is 30 milligram per liter. So, that means we have to reduce the BOD 5 up to 30 milligram per liter. Now, we have to make certain assumptions that what are the conditions that will be taken. So, we are assuming to have an hydraulic loading of 0.05 meter cube per meter square per day and other suitable data can also be acquired if needed. So, how to go ahead? Let us go further. So, the disk area which is required can be calculated like this. So, we know the wastewater flow rate is it has been given 10 MLD. So, that means 10,000 meter cube per day is the flow rate. Now, if we divide it by the hydraulic loading which is assumed to be 0.05 meter cube per meter square per day. So, we can get tentatively the area which is required on the disk. So, we have 2 lakh meter square is the area which is required. Now, assuming that the standard module is 7.6 meter in length and with disk of 5 millimeter thickness and with 30 millimeter spacing between each disk. Now, we are going to design. So, and also we are going to take 3.7 meter disk is used for the treatment. So, now we have to find out the number of disk which is required per module for treatment. So, we can calculate this very easily. The length of the soft is 7600 millimeter. Now, the thickness of the disk is 5 millimeter. So, that means the number of disk, the total length, this is the soft. Now, this is the total soft which is given as that it is given that it is 7600 millimeter. Now, on this we can have different disk. Now, each disk have certain thickness among themselves. If we assume n number of disk, which is assumed the number of disk per module, then the for each thickness, we first take care of the thickness of the disk, 
uh, these discs themselves. So, this is why x into n gives the thickness of the total thickness which has been taken care of by the number of discs. Now, if y is the clear dis spacing distance between the disc which is this is the y distance. Now, the number of such partitions are if you can see the number of disc plus 1. So, that is why this is there and we multiply by y. So, we get the total length. So, when we add these x into n plus y into n plus 1 we get the length. Now, we have already assumed any of the parameters here. So, now we can find out the number of discs that we can calculate. So, 7600 into 5 into n because n we do not know number of discs. So, and then 30 minus 5 which is 30 minus 5 because we have already y is the clear spacing distance between the disc and n plus 1 is the spacing. So, n plus 1 30 minus 5 because 5 has been taken care of. So, this is n comes out to be 253 disc. Now, surface area of each disc uh, can be calculated. We have remember for each disc we have this surface and this surface also. So, we have two surfaces so, that is why multiplication has been done with 2. So, 2 into pi by 4 and 3.7 is the diameter of the disc that we have taken. So, this is 3.7 square. So, we have for each disc the number surface area is 21.5 meter square. And now, if we multiply the disc into this surface area, so we have 5400 meter square. So, that means for each module we will be having only this much amount of surface area. Now, the number of modules which are actually required can be calculated by dividing the total area required with the area of the disc of one module. So, what we do is that we divide this 2 lakh. Uh, divided by 5440. So, we get the answer as 36.76 which is equivalent to 37 modules. So, that means, we will be requiring 37 module uh, for treatment of such system. The number of standard module is specific suppose we have some standard modules which are available and a specific surface area of each module many times will be given. So, in place of 5440, some standard module is available which is having an area of 10,000. So, we can take this module and if we divide we get 20. So, here we understood how we can perform to calculate the number of disks which may be required and the number of modules uh, which may be required for treatment of any wastewater. So, this is there. Now, in this case, the inherent thing is that the most important parameter that we have assumed is this. Now, it is possible that this hydraulic loading may have to be changed depending upon the data which is available and the how much treatment happens. So, it is possible that if the treatment desired quantity is not achieved, then we may have to increase or decrease the hydraulic loading. So, if we are able to get the treatment efficiency will continue as further. However, if you are not getting we may have to reduce this hydraulic loading so that the treatment efficiency may be achieved. So, we have to look for the data of such wastewater at what hydraulic loading they have been able to uh, treat the wastewater so that the desired objectives with respect to standard requirements are achieved. Now, the performance of the rotating disk reactor system depends upon number of parameters. So, the most important parameter is the end rate on the performance of the RDR. Increasing the flow rate entering the RDR results in an increase in the effluent substrate concentration and a decrease in the percentage of the substrate removal. So, that means, if we go on increasing the flow rate, influent rate, certainly the efficiency will be decreased. So, we have to optimize the flow rate. Increasing the flow rate into the system while maintaining a constant influent substrate concentration results in higher mass application rates of the substrate and which may not be good. So, to obtain a steady state which requires high reaction rate at higher flow rate, the substrate flux into the biofilm must also increase. So, it may cause 
problem also it may happen it may not happen so as second is the effect of rotational speed on the performance of rdr as the rotational in speed is increased the percentage of the substrate of removal increases up to an upper limit characterized by the other system parameter so rotating speed also has a effect the volume of fluid carried with the disc into the aerated sector increases as the rotation speed is increased. This means that the mass of substrate carried into the aerated sector increases. At higher rotational speed, it takes less time for a point on the disc to move a given fraction distance around the disc and which may have some effect on the performance of RDR. As the rotational speed increases, the amount of substrate entering the aerated sector increases, but the time required for a point on the disc to move through the aerated sector decreases. These act together to allow substrate to move further around the disc. So, uh, this happens when the rotational speed is about 3.75 or 4 rpm, the substrate concentration reaches 0 at very end of the aerated sector. So, the typical rotation speeds are 1 to 2 rpm for the RBCs we can see here the effects of rotational speed on the performance of single RDR. So, we have rotational speed 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 rpm and the, the percentage substrate removal is we can see it is increasing and the effluent substrate concentration is decreasing. So, at 6 at these places the difference is not much. So, we can optimize at any condition we can perform such studies on newly acquired RDRs for the treatment of wastewater. And once we have the performance data, we can set the required rotational speed. Now, the effect of surface area on the performance of RDR. An increase in the number of disks results in a large area for both the submerged and aerated sectors. Hence, more biomass can be grown and a greater volume of fluid can be carried with the disc into the aerated sector. Consequently, the substrate removal rates in both the submerged and the aerated sectors also increases with an increase in number of discs, causing a reduction in the effluent substrate concentration and an increase in the percentage of removal. So, this is directly correlated, higher the surface area, better is the performance of RDR. An increase in the fractional submergence uh, increases the total submerged area, which allows more microorganisms to grow on a disk at a fixed size. It causes substrate removal rate in the submerged sector to increase, although it also decreases the substrate flow through the aerated sector, the net effect on increase in the substrate removal, because the submerged sector provides the majority of the total substrate removal but we have to optimize that how much of the surface submergence have to be taken. So, generally 40 percent of the submergence is optimum because the microorganisms must also be exposed to oxygen for their growth. This is how you can see as the surface area is increasing, percentage surface removal is increasing and the substrate concentration is decreasing. So, effect of temperature. So, as for other types of systems wastewater biological treatment system, the temperature also affects the performance of RDR. The reaction rate is influenced strongly by diffusion. So, wastewater temperature has little effect on process performance over a wide range of temperature. The effect of temperature is generally neglected for temperatures over and above 15 degree centigrade. If, but if the temperature is less than 15 degree centigrade, certainly it will decrease the performance of RDRs. Then the wastewater characteristics also have lot of effect on the performance of RDR. The flux into the biofilm may be smaller for large and slow biodegradable compounds than for small readily biodegradable compounds. So, it is for large slowly biodegradable compounds the flux into the biofilm may be smaller. So, if the wastewater contains large compounds which are slowly biodegradable, it may be difficult to treat because the flux into the biofilm may be smaller. 
the presence of particulate organic matter also reduces the flux of soluble substrate since the particle matter occupies a space within the biofilm and reducing the biomass concentration within the biofilm which decreases the rate of biodegradation. So, waste water which contains particulate matter under those conditions that efficiency of RDRs will go down. Similarly, if waste water contains slowly biodegradable compounds which are larger in size again the performance will go down. Growth of sulphide oxidizing bacterium due to the presence of hydrogen sulphide in wastewater can cause operating problems in RDC or RBC system. So, this is there. Now, applications of the rotating biological disk reactors. So, rotating biological contractors or rotating biological disk reactors have typically been used to provide secondary treatment to municipal wastewater. So, we can use them for secondary treatment. They have also been used to nitrify municipal wastewaters either in combined carbon oxidation and nitrification application or a separate stage nitrification applications only. RBR processes is a mechanically simple and easy to operate and its energy consumptions are also low. Drawbacks of RDR include the performance is highly susceptible to wastewater characteristics. So, depending upon the wastewater characteristics, we may have to change the parameters and depending upon that, the performance may vary. So, the performance is susceptible to wastewater characteristics. Then we have limited process flexibility, the, because we have a standard modules, the process we cannot modify that much. So, we have only limited process flexibility. And also a scale up is not very high because we can use only a series or parallel RDR systems to treat such wastewater. So, it may depend upon the wastewater characteristics more and what is the flow rate. So, we have the scale up can be only in the form of series adding different modules of RDR in parallel or in series and we require adequate pretreatment before using RDR so that all the particulate matter, suspended materials etcetera can be removed maximum and only organic loading happens on the RDR. Otherwise, the performance of RDR will go down. So, this is with respect to RDR. We have used these references. We will continue further studying the different wastewater treatment systems. Till now, we have studied the aerobic systems. Now, we will study the anaerobic wastewater treatment systems in the later lectures. Thank you very much.